So it's Fallow Week, we've just come off the back of our win against Wales, which was brilliant and Fallow Week presents a fantastic opportunity for us to really focus on us, to really push for particular areas of our game that we want to spend some time and attention to. So it's an opportunity for those players that probably need additional one-to-one -one support or can get in with specialist coaching and to really grow their areas of development and potentially closing those performance gaps. The Wales review was really positive in terms of we know we executed some awesome attack. There was some fantastic defence, especially towards the end of the game. I think the bit that we had to be really honest about was the amount of points we potentially left on the pitch. So the variety in our attacking game is growing all the time and you can see how brave the girls are in, in their decision making and, and their execution. But there were definitely some opportunities missed and it's, it's drawing attention to those and, and looking at um, what parts we potentially need to get after to make sure that we actually capitalise on every single one of them. They turn in the big brother house. They turn in the big brother house. So the analysts are literally my backbone, I'd say. Both of them are brilliant lads to have around the team. They've got excellent personalities and they equally are super ambitious. So they want to drive their area of performance um, to maximise our performance and that of the players on the pitch. And I think that's absolutely crucial to this environment because we do want to aspire to be a phenomenal team. So you've got to have staff that want to do the same. I think to not have them would be a massive detriment to us. Action. <laughs> Coach Anna's relationships are a, a massive part of the job. Since Mitch has come in, we've become fully integrated into the coaching process and that allows us to work specifically with our unit coaches and how they deliver information. The role of an analyst has evolved so much. The easiest way to describe our role is we're coaches' assistants. We support them in session planning meet and delivery so that there's more elements to the role than, than data and video. So today's our, our main rugby session of the week. Uh, we're going to start this morning off with uh, some units, some forwards and backs units, then we'll come together. Uh, we're going to be trying to train some key episodes from the game against Wales and also run some team plays that will put us in a good position going into the Scotland game. We always want to focus on ourselves. I think it's way more powerful to coach a team and to get them to buy into the strategy when you are talking about yourself and your game. But obviously we need to look at the opposition and try and identify weaknesses that we want to go after. So we do spend time analysing their games against other opposition and seeing how they execute or how they defend at different times. Um, and then that helps us build like our attack strategy around that, our defensive system and then our set piece. The super strength of the team is that we've identified how strong our game is, that our strategies are working, um, and then you get the buy-in from the players and then they, they really get after it on the pitch and you see it within their execution. Okay, similarly, if we're going like this and we're going lateral, what can we do on the edge? Switch. Ellie and that did it really well. Switch. Switch, change the angle. Your awesome attackers do not forget that. Okay, be really creative in that space. We're quite fortunate here to have uh, four IP cameras that sit around the training ground. All those feeds come into to our laptop here so we can film the session and clip up uh, key parts of the training all at the same time. This just does allows, allows us to speed up the, the turnaround from, from training to coaches and then also getting those videos out to the players as soon as possible. So I'll stay inside and I'll focus on uh, the team the team side of the game and then Goffey will be outside on the drone getting an aerial shot of the session both from a team and a unit's point of view and then he'll clip up some specifics around our attack and strategy for training. Using the drone and getting that bird's eye view allows the players and coaches on review to look for space in the backfield or potentially on edges that they would have missed when you're looking at it from ground level. So we use it as probably the most useful angle out of all the angles that we capture during the session. My role in the team is the attack analyst, so me and Lou work really closely together with her being the attack coach and I try to support her as much as possible through the way that she uh, delivers to towards the players is something that I find I really can have an impact with. He sees the game like I do but in a different capacity and I think having that additional voice and that additional set of eyes is absolutely crucial. So 
when I'm looking at oppositions and trying to hunt weaknesses in their defence and stuff, I'll see it one way and he'll see it um, potentially another. And we come together and we discuss that and we present it as a team to the coaching department as, um, as to how we'd like to strategically go after them. And I think that just adds power to the game and, and, and it allows us to really look at things through different scopes. Technology is a big part of an analyst role. Laptops, iPods are part of our, our daily use. Upside down. <laughs> Cut! <laughs> Anything technology related in camp falls on the analyst to be able to, to, to fix and solve. That was not something we were ever taught at university, but it's something we've had to, to think and learn about on the job. Need to get practicing. You'll be one. And what we'll do is we'll, I'll put them in 180 and we'll just cut. So uh, yeah, when I knew I had to bring the two kids in, I, I was a bit nervous, like obviously I, I want to execute my job as best I can, but I also am a mother and it's really important to get that balance right. I think it's so important for them to see what I do and understand why mummy's away. I, I had to take the opportunity to do it and just embrace what it would bring. And to be honest, it's been fantastic. The players, we talk about how strong our environment is, how welcoming, how warm it is, and how we're a big family, and they really evidence that in the way they just open their arms to my kids. Like, I couldn't have asked for anything more. They were super engaging with them. They entertained them. I think they became big kids themselves, to be fair. <laughs> but they were playing games with them. They joined in in any activity that they thought the kids could do, and they just kept a really friendly eye on them for me. So even when we were on pitch or off pitch and I was in meetings quite a lot of the time. I knew they were safe, I knew they would be looked after and do you know what, I just, when I say rugby is a sport for a family and how you all have one another's backs and you, you can grow a bond between you, that grew even stronger for me over the last couple of days having the kids in and they are really happy and probably want to come back so that's going to be an interesting <laughs> discussion for me having to say they can't come every week but uh, it's been a pleasure and I think the fact that I know now as well, even more so than I probably already did, that you can be a mum and you still can do this role is really important. In a follow week, we'll still review training to the, the same level of detail. So we'll show something on the screen and then we'll rep it. Doing this allows the players to fix in the moment before they go out on, onto the pitch and, and rep it as a team. Would you shout 
So we want to make sure that players are able to take their time when they're digesting information, especially when you're switching things up on a week to week basis. And when you're in a competition like Six Nations, there's a lot of detail to have to digest and you need to be careful that you're not giving them too much, that then the clarity is not when they're there when they need to execute. So it's a really good process. It's something that the players have massively bought into as well. The learning environment and how players learn and retain information, Mitch has given us full responsibility and creativity over. We're describing now as the TikTok generation, the attention span and the window of opportunities for players to be able to retain information is quite small. Coming into the Six Nations, we did a session on storytelling and the power of storytelling. As analysts, we've really tried to implement this into how we deliver meetings to players. Because we have seen put in quite a lot of new detail and trying to keep that detail um, in players' minds can be really difficult. So introducing new ways of, of learning and receiving information is, is really important. So the visuals and the graphics that, that I help produce, I think have, have landed really well with the girls and just make coaching um, a, lot, a lot easier, I think, too. Buying from players around themes and strategies is a huge part of the game. Ultimately, they're the ones who go out and perform on the pitch, not coaches, not analysts. So we need them to buy into what we're doing so they can go out and execute that plan come test match. Sir,